Gracias, Lisa. Gracias, es un lujo tenerte en Barcelona. Tenemos aún 20 minutos de, de preguntas y respuestas con Lisa. Entonces, os pido a todos que aprovechemos el tiempo, porque vale la pena. Luego la tenemos en el descanso también. Y mientras os las pensáis, a mí me gustaría saber... Ah, gracias. Lisa, tú, en un artículo reciente hablabas de pasar de la, de la independencia a la interdependencia en las ah, ciudades, sí. ¿no? Sí. Could you elaborate, uh, please, uh, on that, what people think about questions? Sí. Yeah. Um, let's see. I thought you said you were going to ask me easy questions. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, sure. So I, we've been working also with cities, um, and part of the Rockefeller Foundation has a, it's called 100 Resilient Cities. So we've been working in terms of you know, how to make cities resilient. From my perspective, cities are platforms for sharing. Uh, many, well before the collaborative economy, sharing was fundamental. Transportation, restaurants, the infrastructure, many things are shared. But we're taking it to another level. And with the idea of interdependence, uh, for me, it means that we are, our data, like, For example, we, we walk around with our little mobile phones. Those are throwing data por todo lado. Um, and so the thing that moves us from being invisible to very visible, for example, we are effectively like a sensor with, with an espresso. <laughs> we walk <laughs> around with a uh, cafecito and, and the telefono. It's telling everybody, not everybody, but where we are, what we're doing, what's available. The, the data plays a big part of this, but also I think we are changing our social operating system because climate change, population growth, the challenge of, of really living together well requires that we become connected in ways that we haven't really been connected for a very long time as a culture as a society and as a global community. And so for me, I'm very excited about that. Um, but again, I think it's really important to ask who is creating and declaring the policies and the social operating system because whether you know it or not, like for example, everyone knows the, the story of, of Volkswagen, se pusieron, sí. Una, una puerta para. So, uh, for example, to me, that says, okay, there was a social OS within the company that says it's okay to cheat. But even more tricky is they made software that cheats. All of us, our lives depend on so much software, we don't realize it. It's very invisible uh, most of the time. But that software was created by someone, many times some, some white guys in, in California. <laughs> uh, so you should be worried. <laughs> but, but no, seriously, I think the, the question of how, do we, how are we going to share the, the structure, the context, and the social OS that's going to shape our being uh, in the world? And do we want to have interdependence where we are trusting each other and see who's there and choose to participate in certain activities, or is it going to be like done for us by, by something or someone? Yes. So, so that was part of the... Mm -hmm. That's a big theme. ¿Quién tiene preguntas? Hi, I'm Carlota P from olaluz.com, first utility customer centric in Spain. Sí. I would like to ask you, uh, what are your ideas sí. on, on how sh these companies like Airbnb or the ones that you mentioned that they have like the 23rd century uh, business model but they do not have the 21st century structure? Yes. What, are your, what are your ideas of what they should have done or maybe what they can implement just to match the business model to the structure. Thank you. That's a great question. 
Lo que nos pregunta Carlota es qué pueden hacer estas compañías que nos presentaba Lisa, que decía tienen modelos de negocio del siglo XXI, pero valores del siglo XX, qué pueden hacer para ser coherentes, para tener modelos de negocio del siglo XXI y valores y estructuras del siglo XXI también. Sí, yo creo... Gracias. Um, yo creo que es, es probablemente eh, imposible o muy difícil para pa ellos mismos para cambiar o cambiar rápidamente porque, porque están creciendo y tienen inversionistas de como me olvidé exactamente, pero es como casi un billón de dólares. Bueno, entonces eh, yo creo en mi película, <risa> en la cabeza tengo la idea que, por ejemplo, eh, otras empresas puedan hacer algo como una cooperativa o algo como así, porque, por ejemplo, eh, en cada sector, cuando hay una líder, una, una empresa empezaron y construyendo todo su ecosistema, es car cara, cara para crecer, cara ca para construir. Entonces, para ellos necesitan... Eh, ganar un, mucho dinero para, para construir la cosa, eh, infra, infraestructura, etc. En el caso de Airbnb, por ejemplo, they created their technology, but also insurance and uh, a lot of distribution and offices in many places. So, for me, they are scaling their company in a way of last century. There's other ways which can include, for example, and in my opinion, we should be making exper experimentos uh, now to, because once someone has created the business model and shown the world how this works, we can then say, okay, it's easier to replicate it for a particular market or idea, not be the first one, but create, for example, Lyft or Uber where the people who are participating own their cars and ride their cars and they have a percent of the acciones, right? Another thing, for example, in thinking about transportation um, or energy is transportation is going in the direction of autonomous vehicles, right? So Uber is spending a lot of money uh, imagining that all of the drivers soon are irrelevant, uh, that they will have the technology and so the, the 8%, uh, 80% the, that they pay to the drivers, they will have as for themselves. Um, or at least that's their notion. But there's many other ways, like for example, suppose that we all create a cooperative of autos, of máquinas that that have uh, you know, that capacity, and then we or our communities receive a percentage of the profits. So it goes into a system like Uber or Lyft or another system that we own, social car, uh, blah, blah car. But essentially your asset, like a car, really generates money for you even though you're not driving, right? So the question is like, do are the cars that they own Are, those mod are they going to be owned by the company or can they be owned by the community? And so for me, I'm looking at when we look at the value chain of these businesses, which pieces can be owned by us? And how do we start to build capacity to experiment with that and test that? Um, it's much cheaper now that there's two or three sectors where there's a lot of value where there's, you know, Airbnb, 25 billion, and Uber, 50 billion, and I forget what Lyft, but <laughs> there's like real, real value there. Um, and uh, th that value is built on the idea that assets that we own that are not operating efficiently, like our cars that sit, the idea is all of the things that we own individually and together, the market will, has a lot of growth potential because there's 92% more capacity than what we're using. So it, the question for me is, how can we <laughs> own the potential of that, that 92% capacity instead of giving it to the platform?
And that's part of the reason I'm looking to blockchain, because blockchain allows for a kind of way, potentially, to create uh, like spontaneous contracts between peers that would be secure and trusted and would allow for different models to emerge. So for us, we're in experimental mode looking at the next generation of, of models. But I'm optimistic. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Very good question. Can see you. Uh, ignore the French guy in the back. Where? Antonin. Yeah. Wow. That's the, the other one. See? Hey, bueno, para, uh, um, to build upon what she just asked you, uh, what about an, an alliance between the disrupted and the next disruptors? Si. So between the big companies si. that oh are getting disrupted by Uber, Airbnb, si. and the next generation of blockchain-based, uh, si, si, si. and how can they work together? So uh, thank you for that, and here's your, 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 your cinco oros. Right. For asking the question, yeah, I think that the question is perfect because part of what's happening with the first sector Pero that todo el mundo ha entendido la pregunta, sí. Ah, sorry, sí. go ahead. No. Vale, entonces lo que pregunta Antonen es, oye, si para disrupcionar a estos disruptores, a esta primera generación de la economía colaborativa, ¿no? ¿Qué tal una alianza entre las empresas tradicionales y los que quieren disrupcionar a los disruptores? Sí, so entonces está Está pasando ahora en, en, en el sector de bancos. Eh, por ejemplo, que, mira, la cosa es, eh, la, las empresas grandes tienen poder, a veces marcas, otro tipo de poder, capital, eh, por lo menos ahora gente con talento, pero están saliendo <risa> eh, y, y como patas en varias partes del mundo como de, parece distribuciones <risa> y, y el lado de, de empresas chicas pequeñas con talento energía innovaciones eh, propiedad intelectual tienen son poderosos, pero no tiene fuerza para, para crecer a veces. Yo creo que estamos mirando ahora un, una situación adentro de los bancos donde la gente, por ejemplo, con blockchain, eh, los bancos están, mira, eh, a ver, voy a pensar. Por ejemplo, en los bancos tienen una infraestructura donde la mayoría de gente nos, no sabe, no, no, cono, no conocen su proceso o sus transacciones y su infraestructura es como desconocido para la mayoría de gente. En su, en, en su plataforma y su infraestructura entre los bancos y bancos centrales y la, en esa parte y gobiernos están poniendo eh, blockchain. Blockchain es un, no es como tecnología exactamente, es para mí un social OS. Es un framework, una estructura de, ¿cómo se dice framework? Eh, marco. Marco, gracias. Estoy aprendiendo. <risa> eh, bueno, es un marco donde eh, gente puede eh, inventar y, y crecer apps. En, y, el, 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 la idea central es hay contratos smart. Y smart porque eh, se pusieron los lo contratos en el público. Es como es un public archive with private, una clave, una, un llaves, privado, privada. Eh, entonces la idea es, por ejemplo, si vamos a hacer un, estamos de acuerdo de algo ahora, vamos a hacer un contrato ahorita como así. Si lo, le, los, los tres hombres en, eh, eh, al fondo quieren cambiar su, su idea, pueden salir 
y hacer otra cosa, pero siempre la cosa va, va a cambiar para representar qué, qué, qué pasó. Y es un sistema donde smart contracts son eh, como open y en, un, en una plataforma donde la gente puede verlo y eh, como es, es valid, es, es real. Um, para mí es transparente, imposible para cambiar, eh, porque es como la red, la, la web, es un sistema donde la distribución de la data es rápida y, y con fuerza por, por 100 o un mil o diez mil puntas rápidamente. Entonces, si quiero hacer un, otra, otra transacción con Javi y, y ustedes no, no quiero que ustedes conocen, no es imposible porque esa transacción está ya, ya. Entonces, en esa forma es posible, yo creo, porque vamos a, a, a andando con bancos cuando están, por ejemplo, poniendo, hay un trillón de dólares eh, perdi, perdido de, de theft, <coughs> se robaron o están como haciendo juegos con diamonds. Eh, por ejemplo, una persona dice, tiene seguro y dice, ah, se robaron o, o perdí la cosa, no sé, o se cayó, de, de repente lo vi, no está, entonces voy a hacer un, un, un demanda de, de, de la compañía de seguro y, y esa compañía las compañías dicen que eh, se perdieron un trillón de dólares cada año de, por, por eso. Y la idea es un, cada diamond tiene un como fingerprint, un, un número de identificación. Y cuando hay una transacción, está ya en, en, el, en el reportaje o en la blockchain. Es un, cada smart contract es un block es muy textual, muy literal, y como textualmente cada contrato es un block y es un chain, cada transacción en la historia. Entonces, for diamonds, they're, they're playing uh, with banks and insurance companies and the mines, porque, um, how do you say, providencia? Providence? Mm -hmm. Providencia de, de cosas origen, es... Origen de las cosas origen de las cosas, gracias, es eh, igual que su valor. Entonces, si, si puedo eh, conocer seguramente que esa eh, pintura o ese eh, eh, diamond o ese, uh, no sé, uh, una cosa mueble antigua eh, es real, el valor es, es su original, su, origi su origen, su origen, gracias, es igual. Entonces son como, y no es posible para, para make a certification de, de origen, es, su valor es tam, tampoco eh, estable. Blockchain gives us that chance. Uh, so banks are investing already, have invested over $1 billion in companies looking at, for example, shipping. Um, when, you, when you ship something from one end of the planet to the other, the, the form that you fill out that goes through the shipping system, there's a lot of uh, problems with and a lot of robbing and cheating and and also threats to security of cities. Uh, so there's a company from Israel that's addressing, for example, backing that up to the blockchain so, so that there it's visible what was registered and also visible on the other side what, what's supposed to be there. Increasingly, you will see that, in to answer Antonin's question, the, the, the small companies are now able to to invent applications and the bigger companies, what we've seen so far is in insurance and banking, they realize they are 
in deep trouble. Um, uh, that basically technology companies, not even banks, technology companies have been eating away at the most profitable parts of the banking business. So banks are left with regulation and no, no profit. They are rapidly inventing relationships with small companies because a lot of the large companies realize that the best ideas don't live inside of their company. And if they want to innovate, they have to find the, the smartest people to solve their problems. The blockchain makes it also much safer. If you are, if you are a, a genius entrepreneur, or even just a good entrepreneur, when you, when you start to play with big companies, how do you know you can trust them? So all of these things are being, uh, start. we're starting to see the experiments and for this I'm super excited because I think we're right on the cusp, right at the, at the edge of starting to see new models start to sprout. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Bueno, si os parece, tomamos café, gran aplauso a Lisa y sigamos aprovechando.